Hi everyone and welcome to topic nine. This is our first topic in module three and it's one that I'm really excited to teach you about because it's about finger spelling. So many of you would know that I love keyword signing for communication and for helping people with spelling and for helping people with speaking. And the sign to be clear is two fingers going to five fingers, clear. So I'm going to show you how we can use finger spelling, which is a two handed alphabet. And we're going to look at how we can use that to help children and adults to speak more clearly. So it's actually going to be part of our articulation program. So first of all, what sort of finger spelling are we going to be doing? We're going to do the two handed alphabet that's used in Australia, in New Zealand and in the United Kingdom. So that's British Sign Language, Australian Sign Language and New Zealand Sign Language. And they all use this same two handed manual alphabet. So shall we start by having a look at how to do the alphabet and you'll also be able to refer to the finger spelling chart in your handout. I'm a right handed person, I would pick a pen up with my right hand, so I'm going to make like a pen or a pointer with my right hand. My left hand would be a bit like the page, so if I was writing on the page, so my left hand sort of remains still, we call that like the base hand, so we've got a moving hand and a base hand. Some people will also refer to this as dominant and non-dominant. If you're left-handed, then this would be your dominant hand and this would be your non-dominant hand or base hand. Okay, so for my vowel sounds, I've got my point, I've got my page, and I'm just gonna look down at A, E, I, O, U. And if I turn it to face you, I'll just come in front. A, E, I, O, U. For our consonants, I'm just gonna go through them once fairly quickly, because you can always replay the video. So we've got a B like this, or you might see it with the fingers down, but I'm gonna use B like this. C is with my dominant hand. D, I make a pointer on my base hand, Bring the C in and I'll just turn now. Can you see how it looks from my side? And that's how it looks from the viewer's side. E was our vowel for F. Both hands have two fingers, dominant hand on top. F. G is fists, dominant hand on top. G. H or H is flat hands, palms facing, dominant hand on top. Then we've got our vowel I, J. So I'm coming down the middle finger and around the thumb. If you're left-handed, it doesn't matter that it feels back to front. J, K. So the two pointers, your dominant hand bends and comes in here. K. For L, M, N, one finger, L. Three fingers, M, two fingers, make sure they're together, N. O, for P, make a circle with your dominant hand, a stick with your base, P. For Q, put the circle on the base hand. You can have fingers up or down. I have fingers up and hook in Q. Now for R, just unhook, flatten, and face the thumb, ah. So my fingertips the same way as the thumb, ah. S is the little fingers, dominant hand on top, S. T just comes into the side here, T. U is the last of the vowels, V with fingers apart, W, just got the fingers interlocking, X. Y, can you see it's on the back here? Y, Z, so a bent hand and a flat hand.
So how do we use fingerspelling to help us with articulation skills? Well, fingerspelling is a way to communicate. It takes a long time if we spell every word, but it can also be a way to communicate as like a prompt. See how you go with guessing a word just from the first letter. I'm thinking of a fruit and it starts with A. Did you guess apple? That's right. So the A is a prompt and it narrows down our guesses. So finger spelling can be used for communication to prompt us to think of the first sound or letter that a word starts with. Why would we use finger spelling to help us with speech? Well, we can use a number of different visual systems to help us with speech if there's difficulty articulating and so the person is having trouble being understood. If I wanted to tell you that my favourite food is hee hee, hee hee, is what if I were to write the word for you so what if I can't say the word but I can write it let's see what that would be like he he chicken oh, okay. so some people with articulation difficulties do write and that's a way to help other people understand them but I could also do that with my fingers if I spelt to you a C and a H my favourite food is hee hee. Now you're thinking chi, chi. -e. So it's something that starts with chi and it's two syllables. And you might guess chi, -e. chicken. And then I can say yes, yes. So it's a way to help communication with a cue. We could use writing. We could use cards with letters on that we held up. I could have held up a C and an H. I could have pointed to a C and a H. I could have had an iPad or a phone where I've typed on it and shown you. So all of these methods are helpful. Finger spelling is helpful because I just need my fingers. I don't have to grab for a piece of paper. I don't have to finger spell all of it. It could just be a cue. So it's a way to help the other person be understood. Finger spelling is also helpful because maybe I'm trying to remind you, the person getting the therapy, how to say the word. Perhaps it's someone that's saying chicken instead of chicken. And if I can do the C and the H, it reminds the person that's your ch, ch. Or maybe for sun, they're forgetting and they're saying shun. They're changing s to sh. So I can put this up to remind them that it's sun. If they're needing help with the f, maybe they're not sure if it's the f like in three or f like in free. I can say, well, when it's the number, it's three. And when something doesn't cost anything, it's free. See how you, I'm using my mouth position as a prompt and my finger spelling as a prompt. So for someone working on the two together can be really helpful. You might have heard of something called cued articulation. Cued articulation is a system whereby we use fingers around the mouth and around the throat to show where in the mouth the sound might occur and whether the sound has the voice on or off. So you can use cute articulation and a lot of speech pathologists do. But the reason why I'm making a video on finger spelling is because finger spelling is a skill that people might already know or might be quite happy to learn because they can use it for other aspects of communication. Whereas cute articulation is quite specific just to people that are needing it to practice their articulation skills.
When would I introduce finger spelling? Well, I would actually introduce it from about age four, particularly if the child is showing an interest in letters. So it's quite easy for a child to see some easy letter shapes like T, and I might say, look, it looks a bit like a T or N. Can you see the two sticks? Let's draw an N with the two sticks and there's an N on my fingers. Or I might do it with my S, like my snake sound. Hear my snake? S, and this means S or S. So I'd introduce it anywhere from age four for a child that's showing interest. But typically I would use finger spelling to help with articulation from about six or seven onwards when the child definitely understands about letters and might be thinking about letters and sounds and how what they're saying relates to a word they might spell. I'd also definitely introduce finger spelling quite early and continue to use it for a child who has dyspraxia or that could be a teenager or an adult who has dyspraxia who is possibly going to have to rely on having an augmentative communication system for quite some time, possibly even for the rest of their life. Finger spelling for someone with dyspraxia is going to be useful when they're trying to make themselves understood and also when they're trying to make the correct sound for themselves. I think keyword signing to help with articulation skills is suitable to try with most clients, particularly if they enjoy it and they like visual prompts. It's one of those things that you can just introduce informally and see how it goes. If the client is responding and the family's positive and it seems to be helping, then use it. You can use it a little bit or you can use it a lot. If you introduce it and the client seems to be ignoring it or not really liking it or has a preference for maybe handwriting or picture cards or letter cards, then just go with whatever seems to work best. For a lot of people, using finger spelling is a really fun, positive thing. Some children feel quite clever that they know how to finger spell, that they can spell their name and they use it really well to help them with their speech. So it can be a really fun, positive thing to do. I like using finger spelling to help with articulation skills. So I'll give you a couple of examples. I've got a game here, pizza game. So let's say I had a client and instead of calling it pizza with a p, p they're calling it pizza with a b. What I might do is, is I show them the piece. I'd say, could you tell me what this is called and remember to use your p. And I'll actually do the p onto the letter p. They might imitate me p, and feel the puff as well. So can you do the pizza? Starts with p. On the pizza, you might put some pepperoni. Starts with p. p. Or some onion. Now for onion, I wouldn't really use it for the vowel. It tends to be more for the consonants. But maybe I'm trying to get the n on the end. So I might have a client that's calling it anya, anya. And I'm going to show them the n so they can listen to that final sound. And it gives me a way to elongate that final n. Onion, can you hear my n? Onion, onion. I've got some cheese. Here's my chip. Cheese, it's gonna start with the C H sound. Ch, ch, cheese. I could use this for articulation to say, do you know when we write cheese, we write an S with an E, but when we say cheese, it's a Z with our voice on. Cheese. So, Sometimes it's useful to use finger spelling to show that the sound might be slightly different from the spelling. Cheese. Do you think this could be rocket? <laughs> so maybe someone who's gliding would call this wocket. And they might say, I'm gonna put some wocket on. Put some wocket on the pizza. And I might go, I might even not say it. I don't wanna embarrass them. Perhaps they're 12. They don't wanna be embarrassed. I might just go. I'm showing them my mouth and the letter. 
So finger spilling can be a prompt that's done quite subtly. Or I could say it as well, rocket, rocket. What else have we got for the pizza? I think this is supposed to be the tomato base. Let's imagine that someone's having trouble getting the mmm in the middle of the word. So I might go like this. I could even put the piece here. Tomato, tomato. And then I might do the three syllables. Tomato, tomato. And I find this really helps to cue the person in to the different sounds, because that could be quite difficult for them. The last one I'll put up is the mushroom. How do you think we could use finger spelling for mushroom? Do you think it could be for the shh in the middle? So we'd show them that S and H is making shh. So I might go mushroom. Or maybe it's the R in the second syllable. Mushroom. So we're really just using it as a visual cue. I wish you all the best learning your finger spelling and using it in your articulation programs. Here's some video of me using finger spelling as a cue to help Jordan to pronounce the sounds correctly. I'm going to use my finger spelling to help me in and then when I do my stuh, I might put my d in there, you watch. In gram. Your turn. In da gram. Yeah, really good. My turn. In da gram. Your turn. In da gram. Wow, it was really clear, Jordan. Really clear. Do you think lots of people like Instagram? Yes. Yeah. They look at it on their phones and on their computers. I prefer. You like it on your phone the best? Yeah. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? Mm. Phone. 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 Does it start with f phone? Yeah. Yes, you heard that. Well done. That's an important word, isn't it? It's important to be yeah. able to say phone. Watch how many sounds are in phone. Oh, mm. Foul. Oh, I couldn't hear that in that time. I heard f oh. Oh. Can you say the sounds with me? Good. Oh. Oh. Mm. Mm. Excellent. And now let's finger spell just the sounds. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh, good. We really want the n on the end. My turn. Phone. Your turn. Phone. Um. Yes. Could you hear how it was really clear when I heard your n? Mm. Let's try the finger spelling. Can you show me n on your hand, please? Can you do it with your hand? Good. Right. My turn. Phone. Your turn. Pizza. M. Yep. A. A. Say A. A. M. A. Yep. T. T. S. Yep. E. E. W. W. Mm -hmm. Matthew. F. F. R. 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 Say A. 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 Mm -hmm. S. E. E. R. R. Fraser. Yeah. Ready? A. A. Watch me say Fraser now. Fraser. My turn. Fraser. Your turn. 
I fear. You watch my mouth. Yes. Fraser. Fire. Oh, you got the A that time. Good. Fraser. Can you hear my Z? Z. Yeah. Yeah. My turn. Fraser. Your turn. Fraser. I think you'll agree that the fingerspelling really improved Jordan's speech clarity and it really was a way for him to communicate his needs and his opinions. So it really is a fantastic thing and I'd encourage you all to learn how to fingerspell and to use it in your speech pathology programs. Thanks everyone.